In this video we are going to look at the basics of programming language in relation to virtual reality. There are different concepts which we will cover in this series. Starting from hello world program then we will be looking at functions and literals, variables etc etc. So without further ado let's get to the video. the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a unity project so you can create an empty unity project the version which you're using might be slightly different but that is okay for this video because uh, what we are dealing with is almost common for all versions of unity as we can see we have the very basic uh, standard unity scene where we have our main camera and then we have our directional light and pretty much that's all we have inside the scene now in order for us to start learning the scripting we need to understand how scripts work in unity the programming language which we use in unity is c sharp c sharp is more of a common language and uh, unity makes use of the c sharp language in order for our uh, scripting purposes or when we want to use scripting in unity we need to associate it with some sort of a game object there is no straight single way where you could just drag the script and drop it inside and you could just go with it there will always be a game object which is associated with the script so in order to get that working what we are going to do is we are going to create a empty game object and we are going to name that script game object you can name it whatever you want it's actually not dependent on the name it is just for our references now why we created this empty game object is purely for the purpose of attaching all our scripts so that it can be easily accessed again like I said in unity you cannot have just the script added to the scene you need to have some sort of a game object associated with it now we've created our empty game object called script game object you can position it at 000 it really doesn't matter now once you're done with creating the game object uh, there are a couple of ways in which you could actually add the script to the game object one method is that you can actually select the game object the script game object here and you can click on add component and at the bottom you will find a new script option you could do it this way or you could do it little organized by means of going to the asset folder and create a folder called scripts again this can be called anything and inside that I'm going to again right click and choose create C sharp script now this is going to ask me for the script name now like I said we are going to create a hello world program so I am going to name this as hello world as you can see the moment I hit enter unity what what unity does is it has created a template it has some sort of a you know code on the right hand side here if you can notice which gets created by default in order for us to edit the script all we need to do is double click on the script and it will open up in your text editor now if you have installed Visual Studio along with the Unity setup you might get Visual Studio IDE opened up here. Now what I have here is though sublime text which is almost like a plain uh, text editor and I'm using this purposefully to show you that you don't need an IDE to actually program. You could use as simple as a notepad also to do it as you can see there are like sort of 18 lines which has been created by unity and it is default so no matter what name you give and you create you will get all these 18 basic lines and uh, let's look at it uh, one by one and see what the these 18 lines are basically so the first three are imports so any program you create there will be some sort of uh, predefined commands you can call it which you would use and those can be accessed only when you import them into the program which you're using now when we look at line number five you can see these are the line numbers on the left so when you look at the line number five it basically talks about public class hello world mono behavior now what do we mean by class here is class is a collection of functions you have a class called hello world which we created because that's the script name which we have given so inside that hello world we have or we can define certain functions now 
by default we have a white start and void update i'll tell you what these are void start is basically a function which runs when the script runs for the very first time so let's assume that you have you've you programmed it and you're starting the game right like when you're hitting the play button on unity right here when you're hitting the play button here with the very first instance the project runs that is what the void start talks about so this can be anything from you know assigning certain things or checking certain things before the program starts etc etc the next one is void update again this is little specific to unity engine and in void update what happens is it is called once per frame as in in general our games run like or our softwares run like anywhere between 30 to 60 fps right so it will be called say if it is 60 fps that is 60 frames per second then this specific code which is inside this void update is going to be called 60 times so it is going to be running 60 times every single second again what is the purpose of this is you could actually try to keep some sort of a validation some sort of a check saying okay did the user click on this or did the user click on that or did he move here did he move there so this kind of validation parts can happen in the void update but other than this if you notice there is some there, there are some brackets here and there so let me just explain what that is so whenever you have a class or a function you basically encapsulate them inside brackets now this the moment we have this public class hello world you see a bracket here on the line number six and you could see its closing pair on line number 18 which tells the compiler that all of this content starting from line number seven till line number 17 belongs within the hello world class that is what this bracket indicates so whatever is inside this bracket belongs to that specific class right here we don't have anything much so it's just pretty blank but we are going to make use of this so remember i was talking about creating a hello world program so that is exactly what we are going to do but for us to achieve this we need to get to know about something called a console window what is console window any programming language you take there will be some sort of a debugging method a debug is as the name says debugging so there is some sort of a problem which we want to solve and in order for us to solve we need to know the insides and outsides of how the program is working and for us to know that we need to have some sort of an output option and consoles or debug windows are the ones which provides that feature now in unity it is called console how to find this console window in unity ideally it will be at the bottom now you can see that there is a project window right here a project tab right here and then next to that i have a console tab uh, clicking on it will give me the console window but in case you're not able to find that you could always go to window and choose uh, panels and choose console and that will bring up the console window if it was closed now console is a place where we are going to provide output so we are going to go back to the program and I'm going to tell you how to get an output on this one. So the idea of this program is to put out a message saying hello world right. So the way to do it is first I'm going to use a command called debug dot log. Now you could see that it is basically, uh, I'm using the round brackets which indicates that this is some sort of a function and like I said, I want to print a specific message. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide what I want to print. So I, I want it to print hello world from C sharp through unity, right? So this is the message which I want to print. You could see the matching pair closing here which tells the compiler that all of these content belongs to the debug log function, right? There is one more element which we need to take care of is after you finish every line of code, make sure to have a semicolon at the end. Now I've done this, I'm going to save it. The moment you save it and you switch back to unity the unity will compile the code and see if you have made any error if that is the case then again like i said whatever the problem you have you will be seeing it in the console window now fortunately we don't have any problem with this script but let me create a 
problem and we can see how that is displayed there. Now let's assume I didn't add the semicolon. I've just typed debug log and then my message and then I left it over there. Now what happens is when the compiler starts to compile it, it, it sort, of, sort of gets confused saying that okay you haven't finished this line and you're moving on to the next, I don't know what to do. So when I switch back to Unity, now it is going to run the compiling again and there you see the error message thrown on the console window with a red color exclamation mark saying timestamp basically 11.29.34 then it shows you the script location where it is located and it gives you the line number also which says 10 comma 57 so 10th line is where we have problem yes correct 10th line and in the 10th line it says error c as 1002 semicolon expected now CS1002 is the error code so just in case you are not able to understand what the error is then you could always google these codes and they'll always relate it to some sort of a stack overflow or the official documentation and you will be able to you know figure out what or why you are stuck over there. Now it is saying that it has been expecting a semicolon but then you didn't do a semicolon. So I'm going to add the semicolon and I'm going to save it and I'm going to come back to unity and that is going to reload the script, recompile the script and it, hopefully the error message goes away. Yes, it went. But sometimes what happens is when you compile there are multiple errors and sometimes it might not clear so you can very well click on this clear button. But remember if the error are still persisting then it is going to come back again and again so make sure to fix your error and then come back to the console window and click on clear and you should be good to go. Now we are done with the basic script writing part of it but if we run the program it will still not work. Why? Because we have created the script, we have created the game object but we never assign the script to the game object. Again to emphasis Unity cannot run scripts directly. You need to add it to the game object in order for it to consider it as a script for the game or the program. So I have selected the script game object here and I'm going to use the add component. There are a couple of ways to do it. One is just drag and drop the script onto it but I want to show you this method where you can just click on add component and you could search for the script which we created. In this case it is hello world. The moment I type hello I get this hello world script right there. Hit enter and now that's going to add the script to your game object. When you select this you could see the hello world and it has a tick mark and it's a script and it shows you the script file. When you double click on it, it'll actually open up the script for you. So you could see that it says hello world from C sharp through unity. That's pretty much what you need to do in order for you to create a game object specifically dedicated for the scripting, create a script, have some sort of a basic code in it, save it, add it to the game object. Now let's hit play and we'll see the output in the console window. So the moment I hit play what we can see here is actual message which I had typed in the debug log function which is hello world from C sharp through unity. Now that's pretty much the basics when it comes to how to create a script and how to add it to the game object and how to run it in unity. So if you haven't subscribed till this point uh, this is the right time to do it. And if you have any questions, feel free to add it in the comment box. I would uh, try my best to answer those questions and see you in the next video.